What's up? This is Dr. Taylor Crick from the Autoimmune Doc Podcast. Here's another study review. I love reviewing studies from the peer-reviewed scientific literature to just show you guys what's out there because there's really cool stuff out there that just kind of confirms you know, a lot of the stuff that people are, are looking for today. This one's really cool. Um, it comes from Current Opinions in Endocrinology, which is uh, that in and of itself is fascinating because it's not really about hormones. It's about a, a ketogenic diet as a metabolic treatment for mental illness. So cool topic, cool study, cool short little review. So uh, I'm going to summarize some of these things or go through some of these things. Uh, it talks about psychiatric conditions, leading cause of disability, premature mortality, and etc. I'm going to skip um, to, to this. So the key points, the key points. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat, low-carb diet that has been effectively used for the management of pediatric epilepsy for almost 100 years, which is true. The keto has been standard of care for drug-resistant drug epilepsy for over 100 years. Many neurologic, Here's the highlights. Many neurological diseases, including epilepsy and mental illnesses, share the four underlying diseases of glucose hypometabolism, neurotransmitter imbalances, oxidative stress, and inflammation. Mechanistically, the ketogenic diet can circumvent dysfunctional glucose metabolism, restore neurotransmitter balance, and reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. Emerging evidence suggests that it may have a therapeutic event effect in schizo, bipolar, autism, binge eating, major depression, ADHD, and anxiety. So those are the key points. So as we go through this, it talks about each one of those. Ketogenic diets circumvent glucose hypometabolism, restore GABA glutamate balance, and decrease oxidative stress and inflammation. So glucose hypometabolism. So this is when neurons have either insulin resistance or they get uh, bouts of like reactive hypoglycemia. And they have a hard time getting fuel in to produce energy. Now, in our neurons, we have about 8,000 mitochondria per neuron. So it's kind of important that they get a lot of fuel. If you've got 8,000 motors uh, you know, powering your, your house, it's important that they've got fuel in them. Um, and basically, it's saying that that, um, you know, let's look at this. It says many neurological diseases are characterized by, by glucose hypometabolism and insulin resistance, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and epilepsy. So although there's emerging evidence for the utility of keto diets in these first two things, to say nothing of the compelling evidence in diabetes, they've been used as an effective treatment in epilepsy for nearly 100 years. And it just talks about how that happens. GABA, GABA glutamate imbalance are predominant features of neurological disease, from epilepsy to Alzheimer's disease, and also in anxiety and depression. These are known things. Um, and it's in balanced GABA and glutamate uh, neurotransmitters. It brought balance to the whole system. Oxidative stress contributes to most, if not all, chronic diseases, including schizophrenia, bipolar disease, major depressive disease. Uh, the myriad of mechanisms by which keto diets can correct oxidative stress are too numerous to cover in depth in this short review. So it's saying that there's so many mechanisms that we can't even begin to mention them, but keto helps uh, prevent or reverse the effects of oxidative stress. Keto has antioxidant properties, upregulates mitochondrial glutathione levels, things like that. Um, and it's worth noting that keto diets uh, diminish oxidative stress through both metabolic issues, through just changing metabolism, but also signaling mechanisms. These ketones are signaling mechanisms as well, like uh, uh, epigenetic me uh, signaling, like HDAC inhibitors and things like that. Um, so very cool mechanisms there. And then inflammation. Oxidative stress and inflammation are mutually reinforcing diseases. They're saying that basically the brain inflammation... There's a tight association between brain inflammation and mental illness. Um, major depressive disease, their brains are inflamed. You know, another study that I looked at in another review looked at gut inflammation in people with schizophrenia, and there's just inflammation in the brain. So 
that basically gets corrected with keto. And you can read the details in here if you want. Um, I'm not saying it completely ameliorates every sign or symptom of inflammation, but this is really cool. Now, one more thing I want to show you. Keto diets, keto diets for mental illness. Now, one more graphic, graphic, graphic here. So let me zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yes. Um, so, da, 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 da. how do I do this? So this is showing the studies. Um, and they're saying that glucose hypometabolism, neurotransmitter balance, oxidative stress, inflammation. Three stars is saying that there's a lot of evidence. One star is saying, yeah, there's some case series. So there's ADHD, one star, bipolar, one star. Then we go schizo, autism, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, MS. I have a whole other video about MS and keto diets going through a myriad of different studies and papers. Parkinson's, depression, you know, we threw in anxiety, there's some for obesity, there's a lot for diabetes, there's a lot more research coming out about keto. Now, my point of doing this review isn't saying, hey, everybody should do keto, but my point is saying that if you have mental illness of any kind, if you have anxiety, if you have depression, if you have bipolar, if you have schizophrenia, a medication may be necessary and there may be a, a time and a place, but there's also a laundry list of side effects with any psychotropic medications. And I don't know that people are uh, aware that not only is there this type of evidence available, but that these options are a safer uh, option, and they're not guaranteed to work. You know, keto is not guaranteed to work. Uh, Gluten free is not guaranteed to work. But they're both shown in evidence. Uh, there's evidence to show that they help in these mental diseases. Um, and yeah, I think that it's a, a more conservative approach. So again, keto is something that I use very often. I've seen amazing results with for you know neurological issues certainly for diabetes and for weight loss and for for different things like that but again i i let people know this isn't a diet this is a metabolic therapy that's focused on your mitochondria that's focused on these different signaling molecules it's so much more than just hey try this diet for 30 days i hate the fact that it's been fatted in that way but of course any diet that makes you feel better and lose weight obviously becomes a big fat and it's not the right thing for everybody either but again in these situations if you have anxiety if you have major depressive disorder if you have bipolar disorder then trying something like a dietary change should be one of your first things to try rather than trying a medication that could have side effects even though it's easy to just pop a pill um, there are some of these things that could have more lasting long-term effects and actually help the underlying mechanisms improve rather than just, you know, masking some of the symptoms. So, hope that helps. Um, hope you enjoy it. Share this, share this with somebody you know who needs this, who's done keto, um, or who has a mental uh, illness. Um, yeah, let them know.